Hello everyone, welcome back for another YouTube video, All In Crypto here, and this is gonna be your first daily cryptocurrency market update of 2023. Guys, we've got a big year ahead of us and hopefully you're all along for the ride. Yesterday, we released a video where we looked at some comments made from or by Larry Fink, Christine Lagarde, the World Economic Forum, and the Governor of the Bank of England, all talking about blockchain technology and how it was going to revolutionize and change the financial landscape. You are in and currently looking at the asset class of tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Blockchain is going to be the operating system of tomorrow's financial world, and it's going to be far more uh, inclusive than that. Potentially, it's going to be how we um, transact data in terms of identities and, 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 and everything uh, involved with the digital age and blockchain is going to be at the heart of that. So it's going to be a very exciting future for you crypto enthusiasts out there. Um, but today we're just going to be giving a overview, a bit of a market update where Bitcoin currently is and, uh, you know, a little bit about the year we've got ahead of us. 2022 was indeed a brutal time. You know, uh, we lost from the 1st of 2022 all the way to where we currently are, 72% for Bitcoin. Some altcoins, uh, 90 plus percent down, and some of them have completely dropped off the face of the earth uh, with uh, crashes like the Luna fiasco, the FTX fiasco, and so on and so forth. But this is the nature of the beast when you're talking about an emerging market and emerging technologies. These things happen and they happen frequently. Um, I am going to start doing daily... Bitcoin initially specific technical updates where we do technical analysis on Bitcoin. We're going to look at the yearly open um, and then we are going to uh, go through uh, a bit more of an intraday, smaller time frame um, overview. Um, but this is, as always, with our general uh, market overviews, going to be looking at a lot of what we're going to have to contend with this year. So, even though the cryptocurrency market is trading, it's a 24-7 market, the traditional markets are off today as it is New Year's Day uh, in the UK and the US. So the markets are closed. Uh, and we actually have quite a bit of economic data coming out, which is all going to um, spur on and move the market in one direction or another. Uh, we've got the Eurozone CPI coming out on Friday. We've got the US non-farm payroll report. Uh, and we've got a number of other things coming out. Uh, we've got the FOMC minutes, which is where they're going to set out their outlook for 2023. Um, and I think the outlook is very much going to be about bringing inflation back under control. And we know why markets have sold off um, thus far. You know, I'm, I'm going to very quickly show you in a nutshell a wrap of 2022 uh, and, and why everything went in the direction that it did and we're going to bring up the 30 day fed funds yes we will bring this up we won't use a monthly chart or we will um, and we'll we'll put some markets on here so we'll put bitcoin in a nice bitcoin orange we're going to put the uh smp in here you know we know that all markets sold off in um preempt of interest rate hikes we've spoke about this concept of liquidity and the fact that liquidity has to get taken from markets and redirected into a very overly indebted debt market um, or, or um, sort of bond market, I should say. So the federal government currently expenditures, interest payments are still going parabolic, currently at $737 billion in Q3 2022. So this has gone up even more and is going to get up even more as the Fed raise interest rates. Now, this is the federal government's interest rate payments. This isn't the corporate or the personal or the um, institutional interest payments that will probably be actually even higher than this. And this is just the specific case for the United States, let alone um, the rest of the world. Uh, and this is a huge liquidity drain. And this is why all markets sold off in preempt of interest rates. So in green, we've got 30 day Fed funds futures. When it goes down, it means interest rates are going up. And then we've got the markets, uh, you know, kind of where they are. Um, and you can see they sold off in preempt to this. And have continued to sell off with a continuation to the downside for interest rates. And interest rates right now are priced in at 4.32%. Uh, 
I think they're going to get higher than this, essentially. And I think that the, this pricing for interest rates has come from the, where are we, where are we? Uh, the two-year. So we did a whole video. Um, it's going to be a bit more of an inclusive one, guys, because, of course, I've not spoken or we've not done a daily market update for a little while. Um, we did a, a a whole video on the two-year yields and the Fed funds and how the two years typically leads the Fed funds. You know, the, 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 the two-year tops out and then the Fed funds tops out shortly after uh, or at the same time. Um, so, you know, this is why I don't think interest rates are being priced in more aggressively. However, looking at Wednesday with the FOMC meeting, he may come out and be a lot more hawkish and, 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 and maybe have to price in a little bit more interest rate hikes. And I think actually... Uh, if you look at what markets have done generally, moving away from the cryptocurrency market, but we will bring it back in and then we'll, we're going to get into a number of other things. Um, markets actually aren't doing too badly. When you look at something like the stock market and you're going to say, what the hell do you mean? Like, look at things like Tesla and stuff like that. Well, these are high beta, very overvalued stocks that were likely to sort of do what they did under any sort of pressure. Um, but markets aren't that badly down um, in comparison with other recessions uh, and a recession is what the yield curve is predicting we're going to bring that into play in just a second because this is something we're going to have to contend with this year you know are we going to get this crash this lehman's moment uh, which people have got to be wary of or is there too much emphasis on this and does it not happen and and you know do we get more of a soft landing and would that that would be kind of the biggest shock to markets and i'm very aware that markets love to the sort of pain element um so we we're, we're still despite the interest rate hikes you know, if you look at the S&P, if we look at the Dow, for goodness sake, um, this is not the one I want. Let's get the Dow Jones up. The Dow Jones is literally just about 10% from its all-time highs. Okay, in 2008, which was a recession, the yield curve predicted it. We've got a yield curve prediction out. It's 50% down. Uh, and in the 2000s, though, however, it sold off significantly more. So the Dow maybe has a little bit more lower to go. It's a bit of a cash cow because, of course, it's like the FTSE in many respects for the for the UK FTSE, which is very, very marginally down. Um, so th this, of course, is a lot less higher beta. But this is all indicators to me that we haven't had a, the, the, the kind of bulk of the recession. Yes, crypto smashed and high value, high beta tech smashed. But the actual recession um, hasn't really shown up in these markets yet. And I think this gives Jerome Powell, certainly on a weak dollar, and remember there's a currency war going on right now uh, with BRICS and everything going on there, the, the, the kind of go-ahead to keep doing what he's doing, certainly whilst inflation stays, inflation stays persistently high. Um, and yes, it's coming down, but the question is, does it continue to come down? Do we have some bumps in the road? You know, th th This is the market that we're navigating this year. Uh, and I do think, yeah, cryptos are a very, um, I don't know if I'd call it fair value, but, but you know, it, it, it's cheap. It's a lot cheaper than it was certainly at the start of the year. And this may sort of entice people to buy. However, we aren't buy. We bought one crypto that I shared with my Patreon members. Um, and that's it for now, um, because we're ultimately expecting that further downside. Um, and I think, you know, we've got to get down to lower levels before we look to... Um, invest, but I, I want to do the Bitcoin sort of technicals where we look at the yearly open and kind of you know plan everything out uh, in my Bitcoin price prediction sort of market update uh, or not market update um, technical analysis video, which we're going to start doing daily now. By the way, guys, if anybody likes to trade or anything along those lines. The other main thing is the dollar. So the dollar's had a pretty steep pullback. We did call for the dollar to give a bit of a return move, and then I started seeing everyone on Twitter calling for it, and I, I just hate. Twitter's a good barometer and a good sort of way to measure up if you should or shouldn't be in a trade. If everyone's talking about it and are on it, you know, maybe expect something slightly different. Um, but we we spoke about a, a couple of pairs. We spoke about the US uh, GDP, which has broken out from when we called the falling wedge. We also looked at the Japanese yen and we said this is likely to go down and it's probably going to continue slightly to go down because of what they're doing with their uh, monetary policy. Uh, and then, the, the, the you know, I, I think the dollar is going to reaffirm. And I think Jerome's going to lead this charge um, so even though cryptos, and, and you could have quite a positive start here, remember the traditional markets aren't open, so we don't have that kind of metric to go against. You may have a bit of a nice start for the cryptocurrency market. 
um, in my opinion. You know, I, th I think this is a lovely rounded bottom. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see some sort of a pushback up here. Um, but I will cover all this in my daily uh, Bitcoin market update. So uh, this was something interesting, just moving on very quickly because uh, we've got quite a lot to get through. Um, my base case is risk markets feel extreme pain in H1, which is uh, the first half of the year of 2023. The problem is that so do many others. If happens, or if this happens, I think you meant to say, um, this will be the most telegraphed and predicted in, well, maybe forever. So the thing I'm most focused on is figuring out how it could be wrong, not answers, uh, not convincing answers yet. And I agree with this. I think this sums up my thoughts perfectly because we're all expecting this now. You know, the yield curve is blatantly predicting it. Um, is it going to happen? Uh, and I think that... It could be a bit of a weird one. We could see some something. I, I I actually think this is very very probable that we see something like this, where markets rally, and then we you know that's a sixty percent rally that Bitcoin had, only setting people up, setting those bowling balls up for a sixty two percent um, decline. You know, is this? potentially what we're looking at. I think that would quite actually make a lot of sense, you know, going into sort of the first half of the year. But then does that mean that we want to get on the long side of this and, and long the hell out of it? Potentially. I mean, maybe. I'm not so sure. But this is something that we will work out. And of course, I'll be uh, paying uh, close attention to um, moving forwards. Uh, I also want to pull this up. Uh, this just kind of goes on to when we say we've got a tricky year ahead. This is from Mike Maloney. And we'll play the clip uh, and then we will look at the yield curve because this is predicting something pretty nasty. Uh, and I, I think we're going to get that. Now we're going to get on to when will this happen? Uh, this is what most people look at when it comes to predicting recessions. The 10 year treasury yield minus the two year treasury yield. When it goes negative below that zero line, it means that there's going to be a recession sometime in the future. And you can see here that uh, there was like a more than a year lag, almost two years lag uh, between the time it went negative and then reverted back to positive. Here, it was just a couple months, but it reverted back to positive before the recession happened. Here, it was a little over a year, reverted back to positive. But look at where we've gone now. This is the most negative in the history of the data that the Federal Reserve has. Uh, so we could be in for a real doozy, and I believe we are. Now, I like to follow a bunch of different indicators. Now we're going to get on to when will this happen? Uh, this is what most people look at when it comes to predicting recessions. The ten so we played that clip. Um, you know, we spoke about this. We spoke about this actually at the start of last year. So going into 2022, this is accurately predicted every single financial crash that there has been. Um, and this is predicting probably the worst one that we've seen, certainly on this chart. And that's something that we've got to pay attention to. Now, there are slight lags between the yield curve inversion, um, but this looks like we're in it. You know, in my opinion, something is very, very close to breaking. Uh, and this is what we want to kind of avoid, going back to that sort of March 2020 run up and then that slam. I think this is potentially what we're looking at, um, something that tricks people into getting bullish again only to rug and pull their pants down. Uh, that's that's kind of probably what 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 I'm uh, looking at, and I just want to finish on my rainbow chart. You know, are we? This is something that we drew a long time ago when we were up here. We said you're going to get a spill. Is, do you have a rally before the spill, or is it just a straight up spill? It's looking like it's played out well. You know, this is the four year cycle theory. Uh, of course, the start of the year or the start of the four years is the red, and then it goes through your sort of traffic light system. This wasn't a bad year at all, or a bad start to the year, um, or it was slightly down the prior cycle. This one was also down, uh, and this one was slightly up. So we'll see what takes place, guys. Uh, and I think tomorrow's traditional markets opening is really going to set the direction and the pace. That's all I've got for you in this video, guys. If you've enjoyed the content, like, so appreciate it. So as a comment, if you want to kill this year in terms of being a cryptocurrency investor and potential trader, Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click always on the notification bell. And if you want to take that experience even further, feel free to join my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you in the next YouTube video.